I'm not here for the struggle, brother. I just, <laughs> I just came for the dashiki. <laughs> What's the difference between being black and being African? Sometimes it seems like it's one and the same, and other times it seems like it's polar opposites. And sometimes I feel fake because I feel like I just put on African identity whenever it's convenient. Because there was definitely a time in Korea where people were trying to ask me if I was African and I made it very clear that I wasn't. There was a guy following me and he kept saying, Africa Saram, Africa Saram, which means African person. And I was like, Ani, Ani yo, Miku Saram, Miku Saram. I wanted him to know very clearly that I was American because I wanted those privileges. I wanted that degree of access in the country and I didn't want him to judge me thinking I was from Africa. And I felt bad when I had denied the fact that I was African. I felt the same way that Peter must have felt when he denied Christ. You know what I mean? He, he realized it at the last moment and felt shame. And I was like, yo, are the ancestors looking down on me? Like <laughs> judging a brother because I denied, I denied my African roots. And so I wanted to have this conversation today because I feel like right now is a very convenient time to pick up African identity. And sometimes we need to make sure that we're being real about it and not just doing it because it's trendy. I mean, think about it. We got Black Panther in the theaters right now. We got Afro beats playing everywhere. And then for me, I live in Harlem, so it's a home of a lot of West Africans. And so it's all around me. But I want to make sure I'm not being fake about it. So I want to have a conversation with my friend Ayo in motion. Quite honestly, you can look at it from different perspectives. Uh, like you were saying earlier, sometimes people put on being African these days is very trendy and it's mm -hmm. very convenient. But I think there's a deeper, deeper conversation to be had. First yeah. of all, like in terms of just originating from Africa, your ancestors. So who am I to tell you you're not African? And I think the second part of it is like there's oftentimes this division between Africans and African-Americans that... It's not even a real division as far as I'm concerned. I think it's one that has been fabricated through history and society to create more division than is necessary. Why aren't you African? Why do you need 23 and me to tell you that? Um, and I also think sometimes Africans sort of make fun of African Americans because you're trying to seek and find the origins of your ancestry. Mm -hmm. But like, if it were me, wouldn't I want to know the origins of my ancestry? So I think that even the whole question of are you black or are you African mm -hmm. instantly creates a division that is often unnecessary. If anything, our differences are more cultural because I think you are African. No, absolutely. So um, because you are my African expert, <laughs> um, expert. <laughs> can you tell me where I'm from? Well, sure. Because um, I've been wanting to know for a very long time. Okay, so I, I think you should be just 100% Nigerian because I am, and that's just the coolest thing on earth. I'm but you, joking. But, you, I'm know, joking, I'm but you know what's funny is like yeah. growing up, yeah. I would relate to whatever I liked at the moment. So in, in college, I had a bunch of Nigerian friends, so I was Nigerian. Nigerian friend. They called me John the Baptist. We were in a Bible study group, and so <laughs> John the I was, Baptist. that's what they called me. They wouldn't me. even give you a Nigerian name? That's what they called me, so I was Nigerian for that moment. I even went to Nigerian churches, which go forever. Oops. Oh my gosh. That's like a day party. Oh, oh my gosh. It was, it was insane. So right. I was Nigerian for that period of time, okay. and then I remember I was on MySpace, and I seen this East African woman from Eritrea, and then I was like, yo, that's where I'm from now. And I learned everything about Tigrinya, and I started studying, and then I started looking at Amharic, and I was, yeah, then I was over there in that swing, and so, and then um, I met a couple cool people from like, you know, Cameroon, and I was like, yo, I'm just Cameroon's a swing. Then it was Ghana, and then now in New York, I run into all these Caribbean people or whatever, and I'll go to like a Haitian Day celebration, and they'll, they'll be talking about their history and everything they've accomplished, I'm in, and I'm feeling so proud to be Haitian. I'm like, yo, man, it feels good to be Haitian. <laughs> and then I remember I'm, I'm not Haitian, but I feel like <laughs> at those Just celebrations, it on, like, <laughs> I'm like, why not? Would, I'm like, I get to be a little bit of everything be everybody, because yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right, so right. because I don't know, I can literally be a, a touch of everything at, at any given moment. But what I wanted to ask you is yeah. what it was like growing up. I mean, so I came to America when I was about 14 years old, Flint, Michigan. Shout out mm -hmm. to Flint, Michigan, uh, always. Uh, and what, what actually happened in high school is people used to ask me crazy questions like, hey, oh, Africa, do you chase lions and tigers? And, you know, I mean, and African booty scratcher, every African yeah, can tell you about yeah. being called African booty scratcher. Now Africa is cool. Everyone's wearing that shikis. Yeah. You know, they're trendy. all whatever. It's pretty trendy. Um, but to get to the point. I found out that, that a lot of those questions were coming from an ignorant place and I, I stopped being judgmental in my response almost as if shouldn't you know this what do you mean we go around chasing lions and tigers realizing there was a genuine ignorance coming from not knowing mm -hmm. and a genuine ignorance from coming from how we were perceived and um, mm -hmm. displayed especially in media and TV I call it media induced misconceptions media induced <laughs> misconceptions <laughs> you about to do a poem <laughs> go ahead my brother my preach brother. on 
Preach on. Turn on CNN. You really see it? No. Okay, Preach cool. on, brother. Look, but Preach. All, all, what I'm saying though, when it comes down to it, is so imagine you've been fed this uh, perception of something your entire life. Say the sky is. You've been told the sky was green, 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 and then one day someone tells you it's blue. You're fed these misconceptions. So like when people used to ask me those questions in high school, I realized that like it wasn't just people trying to be funny. That's actually what they thought. And mm -hmm. then we had this conversation and see they now knew more about Nigerian being African or Africans than they knew initially until I came to that school because mm -hmm. I was the only African in the school. You're an so, ambassador. You know, yes, I didn't expect to be, but I became <laughs> one. Um, but then it goes deeper because I feel like, and then on the flip side, you know, Africans coming to America, immigrants generally, uh, but Africans definitely, and you have this perception of black people, right? And so you don't want to be that. Like when you were saying about being in Korea, these are privileges that came with being American, you wanted to claim. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh, I'm here, I'm African. There's yeah. this always thing like, I'm not black, I'm African. Mm -hmm. I, you know, put to bed that notion and say, no, no, I am black. I am African, I am black, because that division is you kind of giving credence and power to the denigration of black people in this sure. country, which honestly, you're part of that, you know what I mean? And immigrants wouldn't be where they are if you weren't for what black people have done in this country. So not to get deep into all that realm, all I'm just trying to say is that I think the division is sown intentionally of both sides to create this cultural separation mm -hmm. that happened as a result of slavery, but there's actually a deeper connection. You go to Brazil, Candomblé, and Garifuna, and you see that like they're practicing Yoruba religion the way we still practice Yoruba sure. religion. So we are more deeply connected beyond 23 and Yeah, I think it's, it's mostly scattered pieces. You know, exactly. even even the conversation about like what it means to be Afro Latina, like exactly. this idea that like you know that you saw the clip of the, the guy being interviewed and they were like, "There's black people in Cuba," and he's like, "Do you guys not realize the <laughs> ship the ship stopped, stopped at a bunch places. of different places?" Right, right, exactly. It's not you can be black and be like from anywhere, and yeah. so yeah. like you said, those divisions begin to set in, so people really get caught up in that. Definitely, and then you go deeper into the fact that now that it's sort of cool to be African, right? Oh, uh, it's trendy to be mm -hmm. African. Then it's this reclaim this reclaiming of, of this heritage, which to be honest, I don't think you can appropriate being being African if you're if you're black. Like you can wear all the dashikis you want. Don't ever let anyone tell you different. Show up to the Black Panther premiere decked out. It's all good. It's there's acceptance. But I feel like what then happens is like that conversation ends there. You take all the cool things, but like you're not really interested in like the geopolitical situation of Africa. I'm not here for the struggle, brother. I just <laughs> I just came for the dashiki. <laughs> What's wrong with Africa? Nothing's wrong with Africa. Is what you're doing to it. I ain't I'm, one of them African booty scratchers. Are you challenging my Africanness? Because I'm African, brother. You don't I feel like after you, this conversation. Look, I'm African is. I'm gonna tell you this. Well, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this. Look, this is the thing.